This time I'm going to tackle the subject of SSO or single sign-on. What is it? How does it work? And can I do this in 20 to 30 minutes? Hmm, let's find out. Greetings everyone, welcome back to the channel. Andy Malone, Microsoft MVP, as well as a Microsoft Certified Trainer. First things first, I gotta take my hat off to you guys. 30,000 subscribers, wow. I am really humbled and so thankful uh, for your support. I'm really trying to build out a great channel and I, I gotta say, some of your comments and your feedback are really, really uh, encouraging. So thank you so much. Now this is a session that's packed with tips, tricks and information as well as demos on uh, exactly how this technology works. So make sure that you stick around to the end because I gotta tell you, you're gonna learn a lot here. Okay, now on this episode, I thought I would tackle one of the subjects which is so important irres irrespective of the cloud provider that you're using or the system that you're using, it's single sign-on. So single sign-on essentially is a technology that allows you to log on to a corporate desktop or a corporate laptop and then you can open up a website like office.com and it just passes your request through. You don't need to re-authenticate. You don't need to put your uh, username and password in again. So from a user perspective, it's super simple, okay? It just works and it's fantastic. Now, the complex part though is how does it work? Well, it's not as complex as you think. And what I'm gonna do is I've got a little presentation to show you, and then I'm gonna show you some demos, all right? So bear with me. Now, if you've not subscribed to my channel, I love new subscribers. So please go ahead, bump that subscribe button, ring the bell, and you won't miss out on the good stuff in the future. And if you've got any comments or questions about, not just about this or any of my other sessions, then please get them down below and I'll do my best for you. All right, so I think without any further ado, let's take a look at single sign-on and see just how it works. Enjoy. So just to give you a little context for single sign-on, Today's identity challenges are very clear. With multiple clouds and multiple users using multiple devices, of course it's confusing because of lots of different logins. So what Microsoft Azure has tried to attempt to do anyway is create a single cloud solution. Well, actually they call it a multi-cloud now. And the idea is that irrelevant of where you log in from, you can sign in with a single set of credentials. This is convenient because it, you know, the user doesn't need to remember multiple sets of credentials. Plus also if the account is secured in Azure Active Directory, it can be secured with technologies like multi-factor authentication. So in the example here, you can see that we have got an on-premises Active Directory and we've configured Azure AD Connect to con communicate with Azure Active Directory. Now, out of the box, these user accounts, groups, devices, and so on, it's a one-way sync into Azure AD. Now, depending on how you configure it, you can actually configure it in a two-way synchronization. So if the user changes their password, it will write it back to on-premises Active Directory. Be honest though, I always feel that this is looking back a little bit. Now I think really we should be looking forward to Azure AD ultimately. So obviously if you've got devices in Azure AD, then essentially remember it's your tenant, it's your data. We have got a number of management portals. You can manage it with PowerShell, the Graph API, and ultimately you can sync your data into the cloud. So the cloud only model is single sign-on. You can sign in, uh, you, your account is um, created in Azure Active Directory, AKA Microsoft 365. So it's a single point of um, influence, if you will. Now on top of that, of course, any devices that you do a school and workplace join to are again, ultimately, 
single signed on here. So when we talk about synchronizing users into the cloud, we use a tool called Azure AD Connect. And of course, it's all about connecting your on-premises organization into the cloud. So you can configure it by doing password hash synchronization, which ultimately takes a hashed version, which is a single one-way cryptographic hash or a cryptographic um, mechanism. And it produces this very long stringed output of hexadecimal. It then runs it through a secondary hash and then it performs what they call a salting action, which essentially means that it throws a, a unique number on the end of the hash value. That's then stored in the cloud, user logs in, and it compares the hash value with what's in the cloud and ultimately the user would get logged in. Now, the good thing about this method is that there's no password actually um, transmitted. So it's actually one of the safest methods. And as you can see, in terms of single sign-on, you can now set up this with not only ADFS or Active Directory Federation Services, which is a technology that uses what we call SAML tokens. Um, but you can also use this with a technology called PTA. Now, with PTA, um, that's the password hash sync that I just mentioned. Um, so with federated identity models, the idea here is that it uses a token passing service. So what we can see on the far right hand side is Active Directory. Now in this case, this is a hybrid machine with a hybrid user. So when Bob logs in, basically to his app, he needs to be authenticated. So it passes the request through to Azure Active Directory. Now Azure realizes that, hey, this is a hybrid machine and actually I can't authenticate the user. So which is then passed to your ADFS server on premises. Once the user is authenticated, the ADFS server looks through its claim list. And a claim list is a list of rules. And essentially, it looks down for Bob. It says, yes, Bob, you're a member of sales and you have these appropriate rights. And it creates a token for the user. That is called an outgoing claim token, which is then passed to the user who then presents it to Azure. Azure checks its authenticity, looks good, and then switches that token for an acceptance token or a cookie. And that cookie is then presented to the app, and of course, the user then gets logged in. This is sometimes referred to as the SAML dance. And in, the reason is because there's a lot of toing and throwing between user and finally getting logged in. Well, one of the disadvantages of having an old fashioned ADFS system is that you wouldn't just have a single ADFS server because potentially it's a single point of failure. So typically what you would do though is you would have multiple servers and you would have users coming in through a proxy because it's better security. You would need a load balancer and already you're looking at this going, holy cow, this is really expensive. So Microsoft came up with a concept of PTA or pass through authentication. And you can see the learning curve to learn ADFS as opposed to just adding users and computers uh, to Azure is quite substantial. So let's have a look at installing Azure AD Connect with PTA and have a look at how single sign-on actually works for a user. Okay, to get things started with single sign-on, I'm going to come in here into Azure Active Directory and I'm scrolling down to Azure AD Connect. Now you can install with Azure Cloud Sync, um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to go with a full copy of Azure AD Connect. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that. Now it can take a few minutes to install, so I'm just going to scroll down. Uh, I'm going to click on the link there and I'm going to just install it from here. Now, um, just to remind you, by the way, you need to be a global admin for this, as well as an enterprise admin on your uh, Active Directory domain controller. So once it's downloaded, I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to click on open 
and I'm just going to open this now. Okay, so just after a couple of seconds, uh, that's it coming in. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on Azure AD Connect. Um, first things first, I'm going to just go ahead and agree to the license, of course, then I'll click next. Now, in you can do an express setting or you can do a custom setting. Express is fine if you've just got a small organization. Uh, customize though if you want if you want to have a little bit more control. So things like a dedicated service account, if you got a SQL server already, and so on. Um, I'm going to put my um, uh, credentials in so you can see here. You can specify a, a existing SQL server. You can specify um, things like custom sync groups that you might want to configure. Uh, for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to go as is. So um, once I've done that, of course, it's then going to prompt me for two sets of credentials and the first of those credentials is the global admin for this particular tenant all right so first up i'm going to go ahead just takes a second okay so at this point it says how do you want the user to sign in do you want to do a password hash synchronization pass through authentication if you're using adfs um, you can also use third party tools like ping federate um, or don't configure for the purpose of this demo I'm going to do pass through authentication and I'm make sure that you sign the enable single sign on please note that you can also do this with PCA or pass through please note you can also do this with password hash synchronization Okay, so first things first, I'm going to connect to Azure AD using my um, credentials. So I'm going to connect to Azure AD using my domain admin credentials and also my global admin. So, okay, I'm just going to select my Active Directory. So you can see I'm only using one. So I'm just keeping things nice and simple in this uh, uh, example. And I'm just going to put in my enterprise admin uh, credentials here. All right. So now that I've done that, I'm just going to add that in. And I'm, to be honest, I'm pretty much just going to accept everything there. So just click next. And again, I'm just accepting the settings. So uh, again, uh, it talks about single sign-on. You can here actually, you can filter objects. So if you've got multiple domains or uh, multiple organizational units, let's say, and you just wanted to bring in um, the occasional one. Um, in this demo though, I'm going to uh, choose all. And likewise with users um, and groups as well. Now, in the optional features, you can select things like if you've got an exchange hybrid deployment, um, if you want to do password write back, if you want to bring in devices and things like that. Again, for the purpose of this demo, um, I'm just going to pretty much just accept what's there at the moment and I'm just going to click on next. So finally, um, enable single sign on. So for this, Pretty simple. I just simply click on to the domain and this will enable it. Again, you need to put in your forest credentials here. All right. OK, now there is a uh, white paper on this on docs.microsoft.com. So again, depending on your configuration, there may be a number of additional tasks that you need to do. But for the purpose of this demo, I've just uh, tried to keep it fairly simple. Alrighty, so that's it uh, complete. As I mentioned, there are just a couple of additional tasks that you need to do. So now that our users have been synced in Azure Active Directory, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down into Azure AD uh, in Microsoft 365 here 
and I've got a user here and you can see that uh, Abby has come in, Abby Parsons. So I'm just gonna, if I just flip over here, you can see I've got my user Abby Parsons here. So what I want to do, the first thing that I want to do, of course, is uh, as you can see, her sign in is blocked. So I'm just gonna unblock her just now. So I'm gonna just save those changes. And the next thing that I want to do is, of course, I'm going to want to assign Abby a license. So I'm going to come into licenses and apps here, and you can see that uh, I'm going to assign her an enterprise mobility and security, a Microsoft 365 E5 license, as well as a Windows 10 and 11 license. I'm going to save those changes. Okay, so now that I've done that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna log on with Abby. Now do remember that we're now using single sign-on uh, as I've gone ahead and set that up. So let's have a look and see what that looks like. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna log on as another user. Now our user, of course, is Abby. So I'm going to go into a datum. So this is our domain. And, right, and I'm going to type in Abby. All right, I'm going to pop Abby's password in. And you can see that Abby's just going in as her regular user. But of course, this time we've got single sign on set up. Now, of course, she can also log in with her UPN or user principal name, that's the email address type name. But in this case, I'm logging in with her domain credentials. And uh, I'm gonna come into Microsoft Edge. Uh, just go into Edge here. So I'm just gonna go to office.com and she should be prompted for a sign in, but in fact, she doesn't because she's already signed in and she's using single sign-on, isn't that cool? There we go. So there is a perfect example of single sign-on. So what we've done in that demo, we've uh, connected through Azure AD Connect, you've configured the user account with a license, and then the user has gone in and logged in to Microsoft Edge and Microsoft 365, all with the use of single sign-on. So there you have it, single sign-on or SSO. I really hope you found that useful and enjoyable. Now, if you've enjoyed the session, please bump the like button. It does help me out. And if you've not subscribed, well, of course, we love to have you on board. So hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, and come and join our great community. All right, comments, questions, get them down below. And thanks very much for joining me this time around. And I'll see you next time. You stay safe. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.